Okay. All right, cool. Welcome to Sin Hack, everybody. Hi, welcome. It's the other other Wednesday of a month, which is today, the 20th of November. And so the speakers bureau here at Sin Hack, we do classes twice a month on what everybody wants to talk about. In this case, the first one we're doing after a long hiatus is OpenSCAD for 3D printing. So hi, I'm Tori Fisher, and I am a computer scientist, and I do the maintainership of a lot of the 3D printer stuff here. So if the problem with the 3D printer comes up, usually you'll find me trying to run away from you. So this program, OpenSCAD, it stands for open source, because open means that, and scripted computer assisted design. is the programmer solid 3D CAD modular. Mod modular. So there's other tools out there like AutoCAD or Google SketchUp or something like that, which is also used to create 3D models. With OpenSCAD, because of that S, you write a script. So this is the website where you get it from. If you use Linux, you can just install it through your package manager. It's on all distributions. The latest version is pretty up to date. Work with upstream really good. Windows, um, I think there's a downloader. Don't use Windows, sorry. OS X, same thing. We have it on our 3D printer machine over there. It's the Mac Mini right now. And this is an example of what the interface looks like. You've got a big window on the side, and you've got another big window, which is your rendered 3D model. So I just so happen to have a full window here on my computer. Looks like that. And it's got three panes, like I said. This is where you write your code. This is where you see what you wrote and it tells you why you're wrong. And this is output telling you exactly why your code is wrong. So the way that OpenSCAD works is based on what's called a scene graph. So thinking back to your computer science classes, which I'm sure all of us have taken, right? A graph is a bunch of nodes connected by edges. These are nodes, that's an edge. That doesn't really matter, but what matters is this relationship. We have something at the root of this tree, and you've got subnodes on it. So what I'm going to show real quick is a very simple, very simple tree for OpenSCAD. I'm going to draw a cube. Hold on to your pants. I'm drawing a cube, and I'm telling you the size is this array of three sizes of 10 by 10 by 10. And this goes X, Y, Z. And I'm going to expand that window over there, and I will hit F5, which renders it. Look at that, cute. Sweet. You overestimate. <laughs> um, this uh, uses nameless units. All these numbers are unitless. This is 10 s and 10 s and 10 s. It just so happens that when you export to STL, which is the files format that the 3D printer uses, um, it turns this number into millimeters. So think of these as millimeters. Although really you could compose it in whatever unit you want, just multiply a thing by like inch and send that's 10 inches. It's so whatever your tool on the other side of this uses. All that OpenSCAD does is it takes this code, generates a 3D model, and then puts it into another file, which then you pass into other programs for 3D printing. So going back to this graph here, there is one root element in this graph, which is a cube. I can add a second one. Um, I will add, uh, you probably won't be able to see it. Three. Um, so this is going to create another graph. When I hit F5, I'll wipe the old one, put a new one in place in the render. Of you got your root node, and it's got a cube and a cylinder attached to this, so the graph looks like that. Where you've got your roots, cube, cylinder. Hit F5, and there you go. It's got a cylinder right next to a cube. It's a pretty useless model, but there you go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make these a bit bigger, so then we can kind of zoom in without actually zooming in. 30 by 30 by 30, make this like a 15. Okay, so now it's a bit bigger. Now, if you notice, this is one object here that is the resulting operation of this. Because transparently, that root object there, it's actually called a union. It's an implicit union. And I really wish this had automatic indenting, but it doesn't. So instead of this actually being a root, it's a union. 
And a union is, if you all pay attention to set theory classes, which I'm sure we all took, is you take two objects, you put them together, and it's the union of all points in those two sets. So if you were to take this model and pass it to a 3D printer, you would get this weird looking shape. It would be one solid thing. Like if you look at it from the top. That's what the top of it would look like. It is it is line, line, line. It's not a square and a cylinder that prints separately. It prints this weird shape. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a bunch of other different operators that you can do instead of union. For instance, uh, difference. And what difference does is it takes two objects and it takes the difference of the first one minus everything after it. So if I hit F5, you'll see a cube missing a part of a cylinder. And here's the first big issue about OpenSCAD to run into. See how it's got like these weird purple edges and stuff like that? It's like freaking out. Well, that's because the cylinder, as you can see, height 30, 30, and the cube is also height 30. So these two faces here, these two top and bottom parts, those are sharing the same face. OpenSCAD doesn't quite know how to deal with that if you've got a cylinder which is exactly that size, so it ends up looking really weird. So this is one of the tricks that you'll want to do when using OpenSCAD. Just make it a little bigger. Suddenly the top one's gone. Now the bottom one. Like I said, there's many different transformations. One in particular I'm going to apply here is a translate. And that's how you move individual pieces around. Because if we go back to uh, a union, uh, you see that the cylinder is centered about the middle, about the origin. The cube, however, has its origin is one of the corners. So if I want to move these pieces around, go back to this, and I want to get rid of this bottom panel right there. I'm going to translate it. Again, that's x, y, z coordinates. So it's not moving x anywhere. It's not moving y anywhere. It's taking the z and moving it down by one unit. And you can see on here the right-hand rule, x, y, z. So x is that axis, y is that one, and z is the up and down. So I'm going to move it down, and this cylinder, which you can't see right now because it's invisible, is going to remove that bottom layer. There you go. And uh, to make things really easy here, there's a couple of neat little modifiers you can add to, like, to the OpenSCAD language. This one is the, uh, I forget what it's called, shoot. It's the hash. I think it's the debug modifier. Hit F5. And it shows what is normally transparent or invisible. So you can see that the cylinder I made is a little bit above, a little bit below the cube. If I get rid of it, then it's gone. And it also still applies the operation. So if you look in there, you can kind of see the cube is still missing its big chunk out of there. So it still operates on this. It just shows what it's doing in the background. Without it, it just shows your final result. If I keep that in there, then it's not actually going to print that cylinder thing on there at the end. It's just going to print that. <clears throat> so, going back to the other operators here. There's this thing here called the OpenSCAD User Manual. And it's got, you know, a complete documentation of the language. There's no, you can go to OpenSCAD.com or OpenSCAD.org and find the documentation on there. It's this wiki page on here, which has all these other operations and things you can do to it. This is like the first stop if you have any questions about how to use the language. And it'll tell you everything about it. So as you can see, it's got a couple of primitive solids. Cube, sphere, cylinder, and a polyhedron. A cube, you saw that one. Um, it can take a size, which is a decimal or a three value away. If you pass it one number, it's that cube of that size. If you pass an array, it becomes a rectangular prism of that size. Center, you can set it to true or false. The default is false, so it draws the corner of it at the origin. So I can go back here to this cube. Uh, which one of these ones is? And I will center it. Look at that. It is exactly centered on all axes. And that cylinder is still there, so it cuts out that. But the cylinder doesn't go all the way down through. So there's no hole in the bottom. So it's like, this is how you would drill a hole in a piece of plastic or something of your model. 
you take your shape, you just pop cylinder right through it. Something else about cylinders is it's also doc all this is documented on the wiki too. There's this couple of magical little variables on here. Um, it's called FA, FS, and FN. Generally, I don't worry about uh, FA and FS because they're confusing. FN, you give a higher number. It essentially changes the resolution of the cylinder or any curve it generates. So the default uh, FA is 12. FS is 2 and FN is usually 0. When I set FN to 80, you can see that cylinder get a lot more precise. And I can go back into the, the bug mode here. You can see the cylinder is like almost perfectly round. So if I were to get rid of that, it goes back to being chunky. I can even make it even chunkier, like a triangle. And if I add like 4, then suddenly it's 4 sides. Five, it's five sided, etc. Let me make it like a thousand or so, but then it would take forever to render it. And that would just be dreadful to stand here and watch this do nothing. Um, so I'm going to show like examples of different things that you can do on here. Um, so let's look at this one. This is uh, here at Synhack, we did a project with Element 14 where we built a model Death Star in Borcube. If you go to element14.com, it's got a video of it on there and stuff. And the inside of it, I had one of these things, which is just a fiber optic thing that falls apart and makes a mess everywhere. And the bottom was a little circuit board with an L RGB LED set up in there. So what I did was, no, it's on the screen. And look at that. It's exactly what that is. The code's a little long, so it's all wrapped on there. So I'll scroll over it real quick. And the way I built this, is took some calipers, and I measured how big is that circuit board that I'm going to put in here. And then I created the circuit, which is this module circuit. Um, there's the circuit, there it is. So we look at just the circuit, which I created as a cube because it had lights above it and I wanted to have extra space. And that's roughly the size of the circuit board I had in there. And uh, circuit socket was this whole bottom part on here. So I can add the exclamation point here. And there's the circuit socket, which is just this part, which looks like a cylinder with FN of 8. So it's 8 sided cylinder, an octagon. And then I take the difference of the circuit board itself and the difference of the circuit board again to raise it up a little bit. So I can go in here and I can show you. There's the circuit boards that tore out of there. Because the one only like doesn't cut out this side part, which is why I did that. And then um, on top of it was this fiber socket, which is that shape. So it's just like another octagon, but it has two different heights on the cylinder. There are radiuses, and then a big circle in the middle. So this is this code, the fiber socket. I take this main cylinder here, which is the outside. And with the cylinder, you can have two different radiuses on it. Radius 1 is the top one. Radius 2 is the bottom one. And you can see how it's got like a cone shape. That's how you build a cone with radiuses and cylinders. I took a difference of the fiber socket, which I rendered in there, which is like this plastic piece on here. That's <coughs> that, which is a cylinder of that size. So if you look at this fairly simple um, tree, this is kind of what it looks like. You got circuit socket, which is that, um, and that translation node, and then the fiber socket, which the fiber socket itself is a difference, which has a cylinder, a translation, attached to a fiber, which is itself another cylinder. So this whole graph right here is the internal representation of that bottom part. So when you're thinking about applying transformations and stuff and making these little modifications, you have to think of it as you're taking these pieces together, gluing them together or subtracting them, and you take that as a unit, and you make it mix with other pieces. And you take that as a unit, and you make those mix with other pieces. It's like building blocks, only with math and very magic numbers that you don't really know about when you come back to this program later, years later. Because I'll come back to this in like 
I actually don't know where I got these numbers from. It, I wrote it a long time ago. I'll show you some other programs on here that I made. Uh, this one. Like I said, magic numbers, no idea what those mean. If I went through and measured it, I could figure it out. And what that makes is this, a 9 volt battery clip. I printed this like mere minutes before we started. Um, I designed this a while ago though. So you can take a 9 volt battery, pop it in, and it's got like clips and things that keeps it from falling out. It's got two little holes on the side and two on the back, so you can mount a 9 volt battery to things or mount other things to a 9 volt battery if that's your perspective on life. <laughs> I'll make this a little bit It wider. is mine. And this is honestly how most OpenSCAD programs end up looking. A bunch of just statements and hacks to clutches to get to work together. But you can make really nice things. So I made a battery, which is just a repeatable object on there I defined as the module. Battery, which is about the size of measurements out of there. <clears throat> so if I take uh, the calipers I lost, then you would measure this battery and find out what size that is. And I take this big cube, and I subtract the battery from it, and I cut out the little holes in the side, and I cut out the cylinders for the, hole, or for the holes in the back. So like I said, I can add that hash in front of it. Oh, I'll not do that one. Um, so I'm going to cut out a small cube and a cylinder. So that one cuts out this bigger cube, cut out those little ridges at the top. That cylinder cut out that hole. That cylinder cut out that hole. It's not some magical solution. You have to kind of know, think in your head, how to move these things around, and then it works out like that. Another little example here. Um, a small electronic spin. Um, this I printed not too long ago. And it came out pretty good. And it's just a bin that has like a box, and I cut out this scoop kind of shape in the middle of it, a rounded rectangular prism. And it's got a big tab on the side that uh, you can write stuff on. So if we look at this object, <clears throat> this one, I have some variables up here. You can do that in OpenSCAD, so you don't have these magic numbers, which I've learned to do over time, because it makes things a lot easier. So the width of this bin is 90 millimeters, which is about that direction. And I have here a polygon that I am linear extruding. Now I will open up another document over here and I'll show you what linear extrude does. Because <clears throat> this is how you get oops, this is how you get interesting shapes. Um, you start off with polygon, you pass it a list of points. This is going to be a triangle with the three points, the three vertices, at 0, 0, 10, 10, and 10, 0. And all it does for polygon is it draws the shape, and it doesn't actually, the depth there is just a default. It doesn't actually do anything. So going back to the uh, electronics bit, the next step was I linear extruded it. And this polygon here basically describes the side of the box. So if you look at the side of the box, it's got like this shape where it's got a point at the top, curves down, point, 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 point. And that's what these polygon points are. Oops, I'll get rid of that. And linear extrude takes the polygon and does exactly that. It extrudes it linearly. And it's also a node in this whole open scan scheme of things. So if I want to take this little triangle and make it 10 high, I extrude it 10 high. If I want to make it 20 high, I make it 20 high. Go back to 10, maybe add another point. Now I got a big chevron looking thing. If I want to stand it up on N, maybe it'll be on end. And yeah, it looks at like turn sideways. You'll have a lot of this kind of troubleshooting and just poking and prodding it until it gets to look right. And that's a general overview of OpenSCAD, how it works. If you go to Thingiverse, a website for things, um, there is a whole bunch of parts you can download for whatever you want, really. 
And a lot of them include the STL, stereolithography, which is the file format 3D printers use. And they also include the SCAD script. And when they include the SCAD script, then you can download this part that somebody else made and modify it and do whatever modifications and hacks and things. And this is where a lot of the open sourceness of 3D printing comes from, is you have stuff like this, where you write a text file, a script, that generates your 3D model. It's a text-based text description of your model. And like I said, if you go back to that OpenSCAD wiki, this lists everything. It has lots of examples and documentation about how things work, like a sphere here, a cylinder with two different radiuses, a polyhedron, you can build a little triangle thing. Holy cow, that was great. Um, and things like that. And uh, also, just to kind of illustrate the speediness of OpenSCAD. Um, this little piece right here. I came in, it was like 7 or so, I decided I need to make a little model to show off people. So I wrote this mess of code. And what I did was I just took calipers, measured this out, clips on there, put a marker, ta-da. <laughs> and that's open sky. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions about open sky? Can you give a quick example of how to make an object and move it to another place and put like two objects next to each other? Translation? Yeah. yeah. Um, I can actually do this on here. A module is just a way of giving a name to a bunch of things. Module clip. At the bottom I just call the clip function, which looks like that. Can you down. throw some blank lines at the bottom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got the clip on there. I'm going to translate a second clip by like 30, 0, 0. So it's going to translate it 30 units in the x direction. There's a second clip. There's also some basic for loops and such like that in OpenSCAD, so if I want to make a grid of them. Um, so for the object that you moved, you made it into like a subroutine called clip? Yes, and that's an easy way that you can just duplicate an entire chunk of code. All right, so you just call translate clip and then you can move it. Mm -hmm. If you moved that 40, it would have been two separate? Yeah, see? So in this case, the for loop moves it by 0, which is the first one, 40, which is the second one, and then 80, which is the third one. So now I've got three clips on there. Other questions? Now, how do you take that and give it to the 3D printer? Yes. Um, so like I said, uh, 3D printers understand STL. For those who aren't familiar with the tool chain of 3D printing, is what happens is you generate a model, and then you export in STL. In this case, compile and render is the first step. It'll prompt you if you don't do it first. Then export as STL. Ah, okay. Uh, apparently, maker board. Marker board clip. <laughs> and then export as STL. Now I've got an STL file. I can take that STL, put it on the 3D printer, feed it into the slicer program, which generates the actual movements of the head, and then it prints it. Cool. Is yes. Slicer uh, open source? Or? Um, there's many different slicers. The one that we use, SLIC3R Slicer, 